Mothering has gone bananas. Of course, I didn't know this 10 years ago. I was having lunch in a quaint little restaurant in Bern, together with my parents. There was my mother. She chose to be a stay-at-home mom when I was a little child. She's been a homemaker ever since, and she's been keeping our lives together. There was my father. He's a successful entrepreneur. He likes to work a lot, and his wife has always had his back. And there was me. I'm an only child. I sat opposite of them. And in this typically condescending way that only 20-somethings seem to get away with, I explained my life plan to them. I would have it all. I would have a successful career. I would have one, two, maybe three children. I would have a spouse who would support me in all of this. I would still maintain my friendships, travel the world. I would do sports and, you know, maybe even write a book while I'm at it. My mother, she took a sip of her tea. My father, he raised one single eyebrow. What? <laughs> It's all just a matter of organization, right? Fast forward five years later, I was pregnant. See, when a woman becomes pregnant, she also becomes common grounds. It's as if her personal boundaries cease to exist completely, just because her own boundaries are expanding by a little bit. First, there are other questions. When are you due? Do you have water in your feet? Then there are the comments. Wow, you've gotten huge. You sure there's only one in there? <laughs> And then there's the unsolicited advice. Stop petting that cat. Don't you know about toxoplasmosis? Should you even be looking at that glass of wine? It's as if pregnant women have lost all connection to their bodies, and they constantly need to be told what to do, and especially what not to do. But of course, yours truly was prepared. I had read all the books. I had an app telling me whether my fetus was the size of a grape or the size of a grapefruit, and if I could eat either one of those. I went to pregnancy class, pregnancy yoga. I went to pregnancy swimming, where I had a whale singing into my ears and to my unborn child. <laughs> I drank magnesium for nine months straight. That tasted like orange juice gone bad. I visited three different hospitals. I even made a playlist on my iPod for when the time of birth would come, <laughs> which, of course, I never used even though I would have had 32 hours to listen to it. <laughs> so after one and a half days of labor, my career as a mother started with what some people would consider my first fail. I had a C-section. My son was born, and so was a mother. And I was the happiest I'd ever been in my life. I still am, by the way. But I was also overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with feelings and hormones, of course, but especially with my own expectations. See, when I breastfed my son, because, make a note, that's what you're supposed to do, when I breastfed my son, I did not have an angelic smile on my face. My hair was not in a French braid. My, ro my cheeks weren't rosy, and I was not wearing this beautiful pastel gown, as I'd imagine. Instead, I was clenching my teeth in order not to scream, because, and at least 50% of you in this audience cannot know this, But the early days of breastfeeding actually feel like putting a cheese grater to your nipples. <laughs> so I turned to the internet to find out whether this was normal, whether I was normal. And the internet told me to stop whining, get on with it, and do your job, woman. Turns out the internet is pretty old school. 18th century old school, to be exact. Because it was back then when the image of the good mother was first introduced. French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau actually came up with the image of the self-sacrificing mother, the mother who always puts herself last. Rousseau himself had five children, by the way. He did not raise a single one of them, but he gave them away to the orphanage right after they were born. Nevertheless, he felt inclined to write a book for mothers on how to raise their children. So, funny enough to say, mansplaining was probably invented at the same time. <laughs> For some strange reason, this image of the self-sacrificing mother has stuck with us today. 
We've all internalized it, whether we realize it or not, and usually we only find out once we become parents ourselves. And the instructions, they keep coming, too, from all over the place. They come from men, from women, from the media, and especially from social media. Carry your baby the right way. Use only non-toxic, non-plastic pacifiers, or better, do not use pacifiers at all. Do crafts with your kids. Teach them Chinese, but teach them early enough, preferably while they're still in your belly. There's special vaginal loudspeakers for that. <laughs> Protect your children, but do not helicopter. Don't yell at your kids ever, even if they are screaming. Make them beautiful, elaborate, healthy lunches every single day, but no! Do not put a banana in there. <laughs> I'm serious. The most convenient food ever is forbidden in Swiss kindergartens. Too much sugar. So yes, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but the pressure to do it all right is real. And there's not one mother out there, there's not one mother today in this audience, I bet, who has never felt guilty because she yelled at her kid, or she fed her kid junk food, or she went somewhere without her kid, for example, to work. And remember, this is all just the mom part of having it all. You're also expected to be a successful businesswoman, a loving spouse, a devoted daughter, a good friend, and please do not remember the most important of all things. Look like you've never given life in the first place. Be a MILF. <laughs> Me, right? So, you might be asking yourselves at this point, where are the fathers in all of this? Well, most of the time, they are at work. We get one day of paternity leave in Switzerland. One day. In my case, that wasn't even enough to go through labor. But when we came home, my partner and I, we both started out equal. We equally had no clue what in the world we were doing. <laughs> but this quickly changed, as it does for most parents. As soon as the father goes back to work, the mother has a very steep learning curve. She very quickly becomes COB, chief of baby. Not because of some natural motherly instinct, but just for the fact that she is there. And even though my partner and I had agreed beforehand that we would not do the traditional role thing, we very quickly had to find out that this is easier said than done. When I went back to work part-time, as you do in Switzerland, I was also carrying the main load of all the invisible work that comes with parenting. I became the default parent, not necessarily because I chose to be, but because the system chose it for me. So with paid work, care work, and the mental load on my back came a new sensation that a lot of parents know, a constant nagging feeling of inadequacy. I wasn't meeting any of my expectations. I wasn't meeting my professional expectations, and certainly not the expectations that would meet the criteria of a perfect mother. I felt like a failure all the time, even when I was trying my best. I was very far from having it all. So when my second child, my daughter, was on the way, I was still flabbergasted at how poorly my plan, remember, it's all just a matter of organization, how poorly that had worked out for me. And so I did two things. First, I called my mother, because everybody deserves to tell you I told you so. And then I started my online platform, Any Working Mom, in 2016. I wanted to write about the struggle. I wanted to tell people how ridiculous this benchmark of perfectionism is that we have created for ourselves. I wanted to make people aware at how much time and energy we spend on it time and energy that we could be spending elsewhere. We could spend it on us. We could spend it on our careers. We could spend it on making this world a more equal place for our sons and daughters. But instead, the perfect mother makes us feel inadequate and insecure, and she holds this carrot over our heads, and I have never met one mother who's ever taken a bite out of that carrot. Instead, I've met tons of mothers who are exhausted trying to. So after six years of motherhood, three children, and two and a half years of publishing on Any Working Mom, let me tell you, the perfect mother does not exist. She's a Frankenstein 
She's put together by old 18th century ideas. Instagram images with lots of filters on them. Bad Hollywood movies and friends who fail to tell the truth about their own struggles. And if you think I'm exaggerating, please look up the keyword good mothering on Pinterest. So for this reason, a lot of mothers make a conscious decision. They choose to focus their time and energy into one place, their families. Which is beautiful, right? I mean, I love being a mother. I love spending time with my kids. And I think care work is very valuable and important for our society. But what happens at the same time is that the perfect mother keeps us in place. She keeps us in traditional roles. She literally drags us away from the table where we should be sitting at and leaning in. She drags us away back into the kitchen where we take out an apple, carve a ninja face into it, Instagram it, and go into the next round of the motherhood competition. Apples, not bananas, remember? And so what happens is the same thing that happens in the nursery when the mother becomes the default parent. Men become the default leaders just for the fact that they are there. If we want a more equal society, we need both genders. We need more women to balance it out. But a lot of these women are mothers, mothers who are preoccupied and busy chasing the carrot. See, I'm very realistic about change and all the different things that need to happen. It might be years until we get adequate parental leave. It might take one or two generations until we value care work as much as we value paid work. But it all starts in our minds. And so I'm asking you today, whether you are a mother, whether you ever want to be a mother, if you ever want to make somebody else a mother, or if you ever had a mother, please take that first little step with me today and let go of these crazy expectations. Let's walk away from the perfect mother. Let her chew on that organic, full moon-grown carrot and not even say goodbye. We will pack bananas for lunch, and we will get things done. Thank you very much.